I hate weather. I mean, what's your weather like right now? Sun? Rain? Snow? Whatever it is, there's a pretty good chance you wish it was something else. Let's say it's the 27th of July. Maybe it's winter where you are, maybe it's summer, whatever. It's probably too hot, too cold, too wet, or too dry. And somewhere else in the world, you can be sure that someone else is getting a dose of weather that they don't want either. Worse yet, global weather patterns connect us all. No, 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 you want to hear just how bad it gets? The air you're breathing right now? Yesterday, it might have been hundreds or thousands of kilometres away. Maybe in a different country. Maybe across an ocean. National Geographic Channel chose a day at random, the 27th of July, to send 15 crews to a dozen countries to capture the variety of the world's weather. They talked to those obsessed, traumatised, or overjoyed by what Mother Nature brought. You've got to stay tuned for this. In fact, watch the whole thing. One day, one world, the weather. a normal human being, relying on your sense of observation, you'd have to think there's no rhyme or reason to weather. But they tell me there is a method to the madness. It's the balance of nature. The natural world's quest for equilibrium. In this case, nature is trying to even out the Earth's temperature. An impossible task. Here's why. All weather is caused by heat from the sun. The sun is the engine that fuels the world's weather machine. As the Earth rotates, the sun heats the Earth's surface irregularly. It's hottest at the equator and coldest at the poles. But nature uses the wind and the oceans like giant fans to push the heat from the equator towards the poles and the cold from the poles toward the equator. All right, so it's the 27th of July. How miserable is your weather today? Let's talk to the people who know, meteorologists. This is a weather-based camp, the CNN Centre in Atlanta, Georgia, headquarters of the International Weather Bureau. Meet forecaster Femi Oki. She's been doing this for 10 years. She should get some kind of medal. I never, ever, ever, ever tire of weather. I love it. I have a great passion about it. I watch it when I don't have to. On the morning of the 27th of July, Femi starts the same round-the-world journey she makes every day, only it's never the same, because weather is never the same. So now let's check your latest weather conditions. Femi OK is at the Weather Centre. Femi. Thanks, Timmy. Starting for you in Australia. Down that eastern coast, you really have been hammered by rainfall and then sweeping across towards the South Island of New Zealand, just in time for your weekend. Does not always seem to happen. It's the 27th of July and Australia is going to war. Yeah, that got your attention. OK, stay with me. Battle lines are being drawn by two air masses. One high pressure, one low. High pressure systems usually bring fair, stable weather. Low pressure systems bring unsettled weather. Strong winds, rain. When two pressure systems collide, you have a front, named for the front line of a battle. Today, the battlefield is the Australian continent, and the high pressure system controls the field. For the Australians, it seems like a good day to stay indoors. But let me introduce you to a weather nut, Jimmy DeQuara. Jimmy wakes up to 12 degrees Celsius and a strong wind blowing from the east. Most of us would turn over and go back to sleep. For him, this is a reason to get out of bed. When I wake up in the morning, if I see something that, that tells me it's severe weather, I'm all active, I'm, I'm just off the air. If it's a dull day, it's just normal clear skies, so I just say, oh no, not another one of these. The wind picks up, the rain pours down, Jimmy races to the coast. He wants to see the action.
Jimmy shouldn't be outside today at all. This is a clash of the titans. Torrential rains, winds, waves pounding the shoreline. What is he, crazy? I think the answer is obvious. The battle continues until the high pressure routes the low right out of the area. Where does it go? To New Zealand, some 2,000 kilometers to the east. Still on the 27th of July, the advancing high pressure system chases the low down here. But it's colder in Kiwiland, so it snows instead of rains. In fact, July is the coldest month of the year in New Zealand. It's frigid in the windy, snow-capped Southern Alps, 5 degrees Celsius. And more snow is on the way. But it's ski season, so this makes the skiers happy. I'm glad someone is happy about their weather. Personally, I think these skiers are one lift ticket short of a weekend pass. Here's a weather fact to use at your next party. The atmosphere has levels, like the floors of a building. And the higher up you go, the colder. So if you were in the penthouse, you'd be wearing your parka. Treble Cone Ski Resort is definitely Parker territory. It's 2,100 metres up. So, for the most part, this time of year, any moisture in the air that falls, falls as snow. They get a lot of snow. I mean, enough snow to bury a house up to its second floor windows. I'm going to tell you something else to make you the life of the party. Here's the secret of snow. As moist air from the ocean rises, it condenses and freezes on tiny salt and dust particles in the air to form ice crystals. These crystals stick to each other. Eventually, they get heavy enough to fall to the ground. If the temperature is above freezing, the crystals melt and fall as raindrops. If the temperature is below freezing, they fall as snow. Some people find snow pretty. Some find it fun. I don't. Snow can be deadly. And I'm not talking about a badly aimed snowball here. I'm talking avalanche. Here's how it works. Every storm adds another layer of snow to this ice cream cake they call ski slopes. Depending on the temperature, the layer might be as hard as icing or as light as powdered sugar. Put this lopsided cake on the side of a mountain and you'd better start singing happy birthday because it could be your last one. Oh, and sing softly because the slightest vibration can start the slide. Avalanches kill an average of 150 people worldwide every year. Most victims asphyxiate within 30 minutes of being buried. Often, their warm breath melts the snow and when the snow refreezes, it creates a suffocating death mask. Today, lead ranger Mark Sev is trying to keep an avalanche from happening. He looks for the areas most likely to slide. This job requires a lot of caution, but I shouldn't have to tell you that. Yes, detonating explosives on an unstable snowpack to unleash a wall of heavy, fast-moving snow is dangerous work. These rangers could be victims of their own artificial disaster. They mark the danger zone with posts and make sure skiers keep their distance. Then, they set the explosives and take cover. OK, this time they escape with their lives. The bombing is a success. The danger is diminished for skiers. I think Mark and his buddies deserve a paid vacation to someplace warm and sunny. That's what they should get. But no, Mark wouldn't like that. The worse the weather there is, the better. The more I enjoy it. Um, I've spent a lot of my life in the mountains, and it amazes me every bad storm we get. And I just think it's Mother Nature. It's beautiful. Beautiful. You know where I think Mark should go for vacation? He should go north across the equator, where the world's worst storms are just now winding up to raise a real ruckus. We'll take you there in just a moment. The 27th of July. Sun, snow, drought, downpours. It's nature's attempt to achieve balance using heat and cold, winds and oceans.